Welcome to Pull My Focus, adventures in the technical and business world of video making. Today I will show you how I keep track of files for our projects and some backup and archiving strategies. Hey Frankie boy. Yep, it's coming along. I'll have that client project in about one hour and uh, you can send it to the client. A change to a project a year ago. Wow, what do they want? Of course, new titles, of course. Um, no, that shouldn't be a problem. I, uh... I have a system. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, bud. I'll talk to you later. Bye. This has got to be it right here. All right. No! I know I could have slowed that down in post, but you get the idea, right? When you're in the business of creating video productions, you'll quickly notice that it doesn't take long for digital assets to get out of hand. It only took me two or three projects before I realized that I needed to develop a system so I could manage the sheer amount of files I had to keep track of with every project. Organization is the key. The more organized you are, the easier is your workflow, and the easier it will become to jump back into an archived project, one that you haven't touched in months. Now my organization process is constantly evolving. Well, it's more like I'm constantly tweaking it, but the basics are 90% set. And this is what I'm sharing with you now. Hopefully, it'll help you find your organization process. All of my video projects have, well, video, right? And audio and documents like storyboards and scripts. So I've created a folder system on my computer to serve as a template for new projects so I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. I've created this folder template to copy and use for new projects. The folder labeled Rushes is sometimes labeled Source Files, and it's where the raw footage straight from the camera would go. The point is for you to keep the files as organized as possible, so there's very little guesswork when you try to find things. Next, I created a template project. Now, since I use Adobe Premiere, I created a new project and added all of the typical bins I need, as well as some assets that I would use all the time, like color mats and adjustment layers and default sequences. Now, whenever I start a new project, I copy my folder template to a new name, and I open the project template. Then, I immediately do a save as to save the project name. Now I'm ready to go. Now, if you're really serious about this stuff, and I assume you are since you're watching this, do yourself a favor. Stop buying external hard drives. I recommend buying a NAS, which stands for Network Attached Storage, which stands for Network Attached Storage. And one reason is because it allows you to access from multiple computers easily over a local network. And some NAS units even let you access your files over the internet. I have my trusty QNAP 4 drive NAS. I have 4 terabyte drives in it, which gives me a little over 10 terabyte of storage space. But wait. 4 terabytes times 4 is 16. So what happens to 6 terabytes of space? Well, I've decided to run my NAS using RAID 5, which allows up to two drives to fail before I lose any data. We sometimes work with really large clients with super important files, and I want to be very sure not to lose anything. RAID 5 gives me that security. All my work is off the NAS, which works really well with my Mac or PC. Most of the time, we're working with HD footage, so network speeds are great. Obviously, if you work with mostly 4K footage, you may either want to boost your network to like 10 gigabit speeds or make proxies of all the footage, but that's a whole different video. Now, if you don't have the cash to run out and get a 4-bay NAS, then look into the 2-bay versions. I mean, either way, I think using a RAID configuration with your files is beneficial, even if it's an internal RAID drive configuration with no NAS at all. The redundancy provides great peace of mind. Once those awesome YouTube videos or client productions are done and uploaded, you need a backup solution. 
So get into the habit of backing up your files on a regular basis. This is where a good size external drive actually comes in handy. I typically will grab a four terabyte external drive and plug it into my NAS. As built-in software that makes the task of backing up files simple, including the ability to do incremental backups to speed up the process. I'll usually move projects that are like a few months old to a backup drive. The kind of drives I buy are called cold storage drives, which are built simply to store files for backup processes. They aren't blazingly fast, but you don't need them to be. You really just need them to be reliable. Once I've backed up my files, I store them away from the computer. How good is a backup disk if it's sitting next to the computer? What if there's a fire? You may not need to go this far, but think about off-location backups. I store my backups in a fire safe. It's locked and stored in an entirely different location. Other solutions would be to store your files in the cloud. Cloud storage could get expensive depending on the amount of space you need, so check prices if this sounds like a better option to you. That's all for my digital file process here at Pixel Valley Studio. Like I said before, I'm always tweaking to make things easier. But the point is to actually have a plan. What are your solutions? Let us know in the comments. Once again, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel to get new videos posted weekly and see you in the next one.